How's everybody doing? Today on Tactile Analysis, we will be talking about the tunes Bebop 1 and 2 from the 2012 OTAC band record, Bijawiya, the debut record for this group. Uh, Bebop 1 and 2, they're separate tracks, 4 and 10, I think. And we'll go ahead and listen through those and then talk about uh, kind of the background of this track. Bebop, the name is Bebop, which in the Bija tradition uh, is a particular dance. And so we'll be seeing some of that. And uh, let's go ahead and check it out. <laughs> Tax version of the bebop uh it's two tracks and it was recorded on two different days um the first one with just ahmed playing the lyre uh and me on the one drum just kind of marking out the pulse um and the second tune has drums i'm on drums ahmed is playing the lyre uh andre sagon still on bass 
and Wa'il al Fashni playing the Sagl. And that Sagl is the name for the ga 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 on the frame drum. Um, those djembe type hits on the uh, frame drum, which you also saw me trying to do on that live gig, and I can't really do it. Um, and especially in that second tune, there's, I mean, now that I listen to it, it sounds like a lot of elements that I wanted to throw in there. Um, and it, it, when, when we take a look at some clips of what the, ori- the true bebop is, the funny thing is that the, the original bebop, the traditional bebop has no instruments. There's not even a lyre. This is a, a jumping and clapping dance. Um, and we'll see now some of those kind of clips. It's really cool. And we also hear in the middle, we heard those vocalizations that Ahmed overdubbed uh, by himself, five, six, seven different parts, um, those vocalizations in rhythm, which is a thing that the Bija do on several different rhythms, this one included. And it's really great. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you some clips of that too. So before we break down the whole song and these different elements um, and the drum part and all that, uh, let's take a look at some clips of the traditional bebop. That video was shared with me uh, by a friend named Oshek, who is Bija and lives in Qatar. Um, and that's him uh, dancing here facing us. Um, and we start to see here, um, there's the guy kind of banging on the metal can back there. Um, but in the next example I'll show, it's just the clapping. Um, but we hear the kind of three against two rhythm uh, that in the Otak band version uh is happening the drums are going doom gut gut 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 but the pulse is on the one and two um and you see the way the guys dance to it um it's in that meter uh but you have that polyrhythm happening oshek also has this great channel called bija people Shabal Bija, um, with a variety of videos about history and dances and music and a lot of different things. Talking about the language also. Um, and we'll be coming back to this page later on. This next version comes from Ahmed Said's uh, own uh, YouTube channel. And I'll include the link to that just as the other ones. So we hear the claps perfectly in sync, just marking the beat so clearly and everybody jumping right in sync. Here's another video taken in a place called Sinkat, which is in Eastern Sudan, near Port Sudan.
So here we hear also the the really lovely melody. I love the melody of it, the perfectly in sync claps. And the Bija are a warrior society. Bija men carry a sword and a dagger with them always. Uh, the Bija famously prevented the British from occupying their lands for at least a period um, in the 19th century. Uh, Kipling has a poem about them. It's called Fuzzy Wuzzy because Bija men wear their hair in big afros. He called They were called Fuzzy Wuzzy by the British, and uh, he has a poem about how the Bija famously broke the, the the British battle formation was this square that was supposed to be, you know, un, unbreakable, and the Bija were able to do that. Um, and so, a lot of their dances have have used the sword and have two men facing off. Um, and and we'll see that in in other rhythms uh, down the road. We'll see more of this of this fighting type dancing. Uh, the Bija are also very athletic uh, people. They have they have lots of sports, lots of games and contests, running, long jump, and and obviously have the high jump. I think Ahmed told me that um, back in the day when he had a he had like a meter and a half vertical or something like that. Um, the Bija love all that all that type of stuff. Um, and so yeah, lots of races and jumping events and. And then, of course, these fighting dances. When Ahmed came to the States in 2014, from when that gig uh, that you see a little clip of uh, was, and then again he came at the end of 2014. Came in January and then I think October of 2014. Uh, He brought with him a sword, a shield, a dagger, a big stick, a carved stick, and a giant boomerang. The Bija used the boomerang to hunt, and he brought all these things with him and just strolled into customs with all this stuff and I think wasn't even asked about it. So, just goes to show. And this is what he brought to all of our gigs. Uh, At the gig... Um, he would do the different dances. We would have we had several songs on this record that came from the dances, and so he would do those on stage with the sword and the stick and everything. And you know we'd be loading into these places, and you know the sound guy would see our stuff and go, "Is that a sword?" Um, so that was really cool. And also in these pictures, you get to see the beautiful leather work that the Bija also make, uh, the sandals the belt, the sheath of the sword, uh, the necklaces, a lot of silver, the handle of the dagger in silver, really beautiful um, handmade stuff. They use oil. They make natural oils for the hair um, and stuff for the skin. Um, Really fantastic. Okay, now we will start breaking down the elements of the recording. First bebop. Starting with just the lyre and the drum. The drum going ding ga, ding ga, ding ga, ding ga. And as we saw from, I think, the first video where the guy's playing on the can, there's a three beat rhythm, but the pattern is still, the pattern goes with the jumping. So the pattern is up, down, up, down. Ding ga, ga, ding ga, ga, ding ga, ga, ding ga, ga, ding. So that's how you feel it.
as we move into the next tune, it also started as a uh, it also started as um, just drums and or the pan drum and the lyre. And then as we moved into the other parts with the kit and the vocalizations, then those were other takes. But when he when before he was playing in the first tonality, in this second part he's going to be here, starting still on the minor chord. on that beat on that uh, hit and goes into the vocalization so again catching it. And that riff was just what he had played by himself in the studio. Um, and then we added, and then the bass was just started doubling that. And then when he played by himself, he would, he would play in kind of an odd number of phrase of uh, bars or just kind of have a phrase wherever. Uh, but then on the gig we would make that into four. So and so on. Um, and that was it. So the bass is uh, the bass is doubling that, and then the drums. I took the rhythm on here uh, from a beat that I've heard in Ethiopian music often. Uh, that six-eight beat. some fills hinting at a variation of that that goes like this and finally the uh the soloing so that all kind of fits together and finally the soloing on the pan drum gah, 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 gah. uh this is the type of thing that doesn't really fit either of those 
either the Bija style or this kind of Ethiopian thing. Um, but you hear the Saudis do that a lot. In Saudi Arabia, they have drum groups with one guy cranking on the on the hand drum, bang, bang, on these six eight type beats. Bang, 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 bang. And I was kind of thinking of that, and I had you know I had Wa'il El Fashni come in and and play that on the tune. So it's a lot of things kind of thrown together. Um, but it all, again, it all, you know, it's all kind of 6-8 at the end, you know, on that same pulse. And, uh, and I just wanted to build stuff around, around the original lyre melody and kind of keep the energy going. So that's how it came together. <laughs> on a Sudanese TV show, I believe after he had come to Cairo to record the record and play some gigs, uh, and he but before coming to the States for that first tour. And I wanted to show that clip for a couple reasons. First is because you get to see him do his non-tambura thing, um, as well as playing the tambura and playing the traditional songs. He does these these style songs on the keys. He's also a keyboard player and he programs all his drum beats um, on that keyboard and and uh, and that's what how he plays at weddings and parties and events and stuff. So there's that and also because this interpretation of the bebop tune uh, is 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 the same as the way he plays it on the tambour because some of our other tunes when he puts them on the keys, are just entirely different. Like he'll play, he'll, he'll take certain lyrics that were one song of ours and then put them on a totally different rhythm um, and and play it a totally different way on when he does it on the keys. Um, but this one was essentially the same. And, uh, and also because there's that wonderful dancer that's with him, Musa, um, who is one of a, of a group of four dancers that I think he would have when he would perform in the Sudan, he had four guys that would dance with him. And this guy is great. And the link to this video is below. So check that out uh, to see the full program and hear other rhythms and other other styles that he does on his own. Next week, we will do the following tune on Bijawiya. So be sure to come back, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>